We're finding the hot spots for your late night munchies. Where do you get your sugar fix at 2 a.m.? So go ask for the scoop and for you and your sweet tooth. With the, with the playoffs coming up, where's the place to be to check out the game? We're going to be going inside a couple of DC bars to check out their sports culture. This special, li this special lifestyle edition of District Wire News starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Adisa Hargit Robinson. And I'm Mishai Salu. So Adisa, how was your weekend? It was pretty good. I mean, I had a lot of plans, but you know, it just rained so much, everything pretty much changed. What about you? Yeah, it was, it was pouring all weekend, um, but there are also a lot of activities taking place that I wanted to go to. You know, I know, the and science, the, the, the rain, the, the March, March for Science. science the National Cannabis Festival. Yeah, I heard a lot about that. I, I thought it was really interesting. It was supposed to be so many people. I mean, they did show up, but instead of people just, you know, outside in a sunny day, people yeah. were out there. Umbrellas, rain jacket, wet hair. It just seemed like it was not the event it was planned to be. Yeah. So um, let's, look, let's look and see how the weather is going to be like for the rest of the week. And Jordan Canal has more on that. Well guys, we're going to have a few more showers um, today and tomorrow. Um, as you can see on this map, we're going to have uh, showers moving through throughout the night into the day tomorrow. Um, and then things are going to start to clear up on Wednesday. Um, if we look at the seven day forecast, it will be um, mostly sunny, a small chance of rain. Um, but no need to worry, the sun will be out this weekend. And on Thursday, um, temperatures will begin to rise into the mid 80s. Um, and go ahead and pull out your sunscreen this weekend because it's going to get up to 91 degrees. So um, the humidity will also be lower this weekend and um, it'll be much better than last weekend. Back to you guys. Well, it looks like we won't see a rain for too long. The warm weather is coming up our way and just in time for the game this week. For the, the Nationals, Nassau yeah, playing. I know they're playing a few times this week. I think that's going to be great, but people who aren't into sports as much, you can go to the beach. There's Kings Dominion just opened up for the summer, Bush Gardens, Six Flags, whole bunch of fun things to do. Plus the rooftop bars, day parties. It's going to be a yeah. lot of fun here in the city. a lot to do, yeah. Okay. So this weekend will be great time to bring out all of your, uh, all of your summer activities. Uh, it'll be a great time to break out your kite uh, now, you may not know this, but there are actually competitive kite flyers. Kelly Vaughn has more. The breezy spring weather in the district brings both beginners and competitive kite flyers out to the National Mall. 11-year-old Nyla Williams shows off her skills with a brand new kite. She says the best part is to come out and enjoy flying your kites with your family and friends. While some beginners' kites never left the ground, some competitive flyers' kites soared. Competitive kite flying consists of kite making competitions, trick competitions, as well as kite ballet, where teams perform with their kites to music. So let's give them two dive stops, you ready? Melissa Harpster competes with the Wings Over Washington Kite Club. She says she hopes more people will become interested in flying. We didn't know it existed, so a lot of people don't know it existed, but it's great fun. You get to hang out with your friends and compete. It should always look like this with these kites in the air. It's great. In Washington, I'm Kelly Vaughn for District Wire News. Students at American University are preparing to take final exams as the school year comes to an end. While studying, it's important for students to make sure that they, they have ways to reduce stress. One way to reduce stress is scheduling an appointment with a Reiki instructor as a way to naturally restore your emotional and physical well-being. David Glico, a certified Reiki instructor, is here today to tell us more. Thank you. So today we have David Glickel here on the um, newscast with us today, and he will be explaining to us more exactly what Reiki is. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. David. My pleasure. Yes. So could you tell me a little bit more what Reiki is and tell me what do you do? Reiki is the defined as uh, a spiritual energy and the coming from the energy of the universe that helps you reduce stress, uh, create balance in your life, uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Okay. And so what are some <coughs> techniques that university students can do as we are preparing for final exams? Well, normally a university student isn't attuned to Reiki, but there are ways to do it. Um, when, when you take a class in Reiki, you can do self-healing, uh, but if you haven't done that, 
Um, you can go to a Reiki person and have them work on you. You could meditate, you could do guided imagery, you could do a lot of other different things. Um, what, what I would suggest is just a couple of things that students can do immediately to connect to the Reiki. You do something called gasho, where you bring your hands together. Uh, it's called, it's uh, very much like namaste and yoga. You take a deep breath and you connect to the tips of your fingers and just notice your hands. Pay attention to what your hands feel. And as you do that and you breathe in and you breathe out, you start to notice things starting to clear okay. in your body. Okay. And so this is something that students can do in their dorm room as they're starting to feel a little bit of anxiety and stress as they're studying for exams. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And also, could you show us a little bit or do a demonstration exactly of what Reiki looks like? Absolutely. Normally, you're going to do Reiki lying down on a table, but okay. we can also do it with someone sitting in a chair like you. Okay. So we had already talked about doing this. Yeah. So I'm just okay. going to have you turn towards the camera. Okay. And I'm basically going to do just a few positions, and it's a very light touch technique. The idea is that your body's like a river, and we're getting sandbars in the river. That stress causes lots of sandbars. So when we move from place to place, we're looking for the places that the sandbar is blocking flow. So you might notice it as you're getting a sore throat, like for example, your throat's a little bit stuck right now, I can feel. And then when we move down to the next place, so it's very light touch on or just above the body. And the person is just encouraged to just breathe deeply. There's relaxing music in the background. And you just find that it creates sort of a meditative practice for you, so you go, inside your body and really find those places that are that are tense and it causes you to automatically relax them you're noticing your breathing is changing and you just notice how it feels lighter as you work so very light touch on the hip and the knee and I'll come around to the other side Then we could also work on the hands, the feet, especially if you're on the computer a lot and your hands really get tense and tired. Okay, and so tell me a little bit, how often do um, clients typically come in to perform or to get Reiki performed on them? A typical effect of Reiki lasts about three to four weeks, so normally about once a month somebody would come in just to kind of tune up and okay. then go home and uh, the way they know to come back is that they start to feel a little bit more tired, a little bit more stressed. Right. But it does increase the resistance to the stress, so you don't really feel right. the effect so much. Okay, so kind of like massage therapy when you come in every so often to get a massage whenever you're feeling tense or whenever you're feeling kind of tight in your muscles or in certain areas of your body. Exactly. Okay, right. and so you mentioned being able to perform these in your room. Is there anything else that we're able to do um, to kind of help with breathing or to kind of just help um, alleviate any other stress that we may be feeling? Well, one thing that's really good for stress, the stress is often held in the lower back. Right. And something from Qigong that I practice, which is similar to Reiki, but Chinese, is you take your hands, you ball them up like this, okay. and you just go to the lower back, and you do a little tapping on oh, the lower wow. back. And okay. it's amazing how much you start to feel, even if you go like this, you start to feel all of the cells in the body start to relax a little bit. Okay. So that's something. And you know, you can do it with a friend. You can tap on them, they can tap on you. Okay. So it's kind of fun. And it's something that you can perform on yourself as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Okay, and so let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit about um, crystals. Can you just explain briefly um, about crystal connectivity, very briefly? Sure, Reiki isn't usually, isn't usually used with crystals, but the crystals themselves, if you work with a crystal, some of you find you go to a store and you're like, oh, isn't that pretty? And you put it on the bookshelf and you don't do anything with it. What a crystal does is it has a vibration of itself and so when you are favoring a certain color, it often relates to where in the body you need it. Okay. Um, so when you pick up that crystal, a really good thing to do is to blow on it first to clear it off, because you don't know how many people have held it. Right. 
and then you hold it in different parts of your body okay. and see where it makes you tingle. And okay. if that's a place that makes you tingle, hold it there and just let it be there for a while. Okay. And that's a way to quickly do it. All right. Thank you again, Mr. David. We appreciate you coming on the show today and giving us different ways that we can help to alleviate stress. You're very welcome. Back to you at the desk. Stay tuned to find out the hottest spots to view playoffs in D.C. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.